Um, dear Open Door participants, hello everyone. Uh, we are glad you joined uh, today's webinar with the representatives of the university's organizers. My name is Anna. I'm the project manager of Open Doors Graduate Scholarship Project. Project and here today uh, we have two speakers uh, from the university's organizers of the Olympiad. First, let me share some house housekeeping details about today's webinar. Uh, during the session and presentations, uh, you will be able to write your questions in the questions and answers sections, uh, which is uh, in the panel below. Uh, and uh, Please note that only the questions regarding the participating universities will be accepted. Uh, at the end of the webinar, uh, the representatives of the universities uh, will cover those questions will not, uh, which will not be answered in written during the presentations. Um, it will be helpful uh, if uh, you as the participants will change your name tags for your name uh, and country. Okay, so now let me start with the general presentation of the Olympiad. I will share the screen. So my guests can switch off the cameras for now. And uh, yeah, I will invite you for your presentations. This is uh, the seventh uh, year of the Open Doors, uh, which is organized by the Association Global University uh, with the support of the Ministry of Higher Education and Science of the Russian Federation. Uh, last year, about 80,000 participants from more than 190 countries submitted their portfolios uh, to join the competition to win the full tuition scholarship for studies in the master or PhD program in one of the leading Russian universities. Uh, you can participate in the Olympiad in Russian or English, and all the stages are organized online. Uh, as the Olympiad winner, you can choose to study at any Russian university at the master's level, which offers the program in which you are interested in and where you get admission. Uh, but there is an advantage to apply to one of the university's organizers as they guarantee your admission to the programs which they define for the winners of the Olympiad. The participation in the doctoral track is only possible for future studies in one of the university's organizers. In Russia, you can study in Russian or English depending on the program's availability in English language. The foundation year uh, when you study Russian is also available and is covered by the scholarship. There are 14 subjects for participation in the Olympiad. You are not limited uh, with the number of subjects in which you are applying, uh, but we encourage you to familiarize yourself carefully with the subject programs when you make your choice, as you can get a scholarship in just one subject, even if you get a winner status in more than one. Uh, the registration stage uh, started on September 15 and will be uh, in in and, and will proceed till uh, December 10th. Uh, to complete this stage, you should take the entrance test um, and complete the motivation letter in the subject you chose. Another mandatory requirement is to submit your educational documents. Any additional achievements you upload, such as publications, certificates, awards to your portfolio, will add the points to the final score. The submission of portfolios will become available in the period from November 1st till November 30th. On December 10th, those portfolios which were not submitted will be submitted and closed for any changes automatically. The Olympiad trials exam sessions uh, will be organized from January 9th till January 17th. And on the Olympiad website, uh, you, can, uh, you can find the schedule of the exams. Please note there are several subjects scheduled for the same day and mandatory registration for the exam is required. The instructions will be provided and will be available in your participant accounts on the Olympiad website after the participants of the second stage will be announced. 
If you registered for a doctoral track to pursue PhD, the list of prospective supervisors will become available uh, in November. The rounds of the interviews with the prospective research supervisors and managers of the doctoral track will take place at the end of February and middle of March. The winners of the master's track are announced on February 9th and will have a couple of weeks uh, uh, and you will have a couple of weeks to upload the documents for a scholarship in your participants account. The doctoral tracks winners are announced on March 13th and should submit the documents directly to the universities where the scientific supervision is confirmed and the results of the interviews rounds. The instructions will be provided and also will be available uh, uh, in your participants' accounts and you will get the notification email uh, from us. Uh, if you have any questions on how the Olympiad is organized regarding its rules and procedures, you can go to the Olympiad website. So a lot of questions, um, uh, you will find a lot of answers on your questions in the Olympiad's review or in the Olympiad rules sections. We also have the frequently asked questions on, on the website. You can join our groups uh, of contact and Telegram channel to follow the news about the universities. Uh, you, will be, you will get access to a lot of interesting videos uh, and uh, reviews uh, of the uh, programs available at the universities the feedback of the students who already uh, um, became winners of the Olympiad and started their studies in Russia. Uh, if you have specific questions regarding your situation on how uh, to proceed with your registration or you had some technical issues, you can contact us via the feedback form on the website or use the email address given on the screen uh, to address them. So now uh, I would like to invite the representative of the University of Nizhny Novgorod uh, to, uh, to talk to us. So um, I'll uh, welcome and uh, you can share your presentation and start. Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to speak about our university, University of Vodetsk uh, of Nizhny Novgorod. Um, so let's start. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, Nizhny Novgorod is the capital of all the Federation district within top five largest cities of Russia and the most comfortable city of Russia for living and business according to ranking non bales beer health and uh, Roboto.com. Uh, so we are the third largest a city, in fact, of Russia, uh, after Moscow and St. Petersburg, it's Nizhny Novgorod comes. Um, so, next. Um, this, uh, our city located close to Moscow, it's about one hour by plane or four hours by train. Uh, it's the center of industries and technologies and important IT center, megapolis with a rich history and innovative uh, economy and high level of social life. So we have uh, 100, uh, 100 nationalities, uh, 28 national and cultural communities, 14 stadiums and uh, two places of sports. Um, so, okay. Uh, Nizhny Novgorod is included by uh, UNESCO into top 100 uh, of cities representing, representing universal history and cultural value. Uh, the key place of interest uh, is Kremlin of Nizhny Novgorod, of course. It was built in 16th century. Um, the city landmark is Strelka. Uh, was a confluent of Aka and Volga rivers, where the renovative water houses are located right now. 
now there are modern loft style concert hall and galleries included into iron industrial constructions of the 19th century. Um, Nizhny Novgorod is often referred as a capital of street art, as you can find uh, picturesque uh, mural and graffiti performances by famous artists. Uh, the city has got uh, a little of capital of sunsets and due to the most beautiful sunsets upon Volga. Uh, of course, uh, also we have a most wonderful city park, uh, Park Switzerland. Uh, it is located near the new built area, Aqua Park, Ikeanis called, and uh, uh, next to Lobachevsky University. Um, Nizhny Novgorod is the center of large scale events and performances for youth and students. In 2022, the city hosted uh, the final of the art festival Russian Student Spring. In 2023, Nizhny Novgorod accurate a title of youth capital for Russia and uh, cultural capital of Russia. Uh, the city where you feel your life is the current uh, city's motto. Um, Nizhny Novgorod is a first university of Soviet Russia. So uh, at Lobachevsky University, uh, UNN alumni and affiliates such as famous people as Maxim Gorky, uh, Russian Soviet writer Alexei uh, Lihachev, uh, Rosatom, General Director, Alexander Sergeyev, ex-president uh, ex of the RAS and Director of the National Center for Mathematics and Physics. Uh, then comes Vadim Varabyov, Lukoil, and uh, Gerard Muru as a Nobel Prize in Physics. Okay, now uh, we can speak about uh, facts and figures, okay? So we have 16 faculties and institutes, six research institutes, four regional campuses, one university hospital, uh, supercomputer, Lobachevsky. Um, we have uh, 25,000 students uh, and 190 international students. Uh, so we have a lot of programs as well. Our partners as uh, Marriott, um, Sber Bank, Tinko Bank, Gas, Huawei, and so forth and so far. Um, okay, let's speak now about programs. English medium programs. Programs in English. Master task. Uh, Management, Finance and Business Administration, Biology, Biomedicine, uh, Psychology, Cyber Psychology, IT, Fundamental and Applied Computer Science, Artificial Intelligence, uh, Software Engineering, Digital Transformation uh, Technologies, International Relations, IR Strategic uh, Studies, Studies, and uh, Sociology. Yes, and uh, politics and IR. International relations and strategic studies. So um, its program details, its duration uh, of education, two years. Entrance exams, English and history and theory of international relations. Uh, the program is aimed at training specialists and experts in international relations and governmental, international organizations and mun municipal structures. Um, also, and the media. MA in international relations gives unique opportunity to understand, to interpret, and to master global politics and uh, regional studies. 
uh, to boost a global career perspective and become a part of global network of international relations experts. Um, master's degree, okay. Uh, digital transformation technologies. Uh, speaking about digital transformational technologies, uh, we cannot speak about uh, the program details, of course, its duration for two years and entrance exams as uh, English and math. Um, you can join program in uh, artificial intelligence together with Yandex and uh, joint program in digital transformation uh, technology together with the Skolkova Institute of Science and Technology. Lobachevsky University uh, students uh, became the world champion and international collegiate program contest in 2021. Uh, just a second. Uh, Mm -hmm. Finance and business administration. Uh, duration two years, entrance exams, English and management. Uh, the traditions of classical education in combination with entrepreneurial approaches to the implementation of business process based on modern information, technologies and design methods. This is the essence of modern educational management economics and finance offered by Lobachevsky University. Uh, the program is aimed uh, at training speci uh, specialists and experts in management for private and public companies, banks, insurance companies, as well as for government and uh, municipal structures. Um, I thought knowledge and understanding of history, historical and contemporary development uh, in the society, politics, economy and cultural and large and diverse area is about program uh, sociology on politics and international relations. So entrance exams is English and sociology and duration is period two years. Uh, Biomedicine, the program focusing on modern biomed technologies with a number of state-of-art labs, SPF, uh, Vivarium, and Innovative Medical Simulation Center. Uh, practice takes place in the modern lab uh, under the guidance of uh, little internationally recognized professions. Uh, here, uh, the duration of study is also two years and entrance exams, English and biology. Cyber psychology. Cyber psychology at Lobachevsky University is a multidisciplinary master's program in a basic direction uh, psychology, which trains uh, specialists in at least six popular profession of our time. Um, Usability research, narrow marketing, and focus group, study of the states and of uh, an operator, AR and VR, uh, psychology, uh, psycholinguistics and biolinguism, psychology and knowledge of cognitive uh, psychology and neuropsychology as well, duration two years, and entrance exams, English and psychology. Um, also, we have pre-university programs. Lobachevsky University offers preparatory courses for Russian language courses of different levels of knowledge to international students who wish to enter to Lobachevsky University and attend uh, the degree programs in Russian. Pre-university um, preparatory program provides preparations for the university's entrance examinations. Uh, it is available uh, online or on campus. You can see uh, a scan code uh, to get more information about admission process. 
Uh, master's programs in Russian. Yes, you can see our Kremlin here and our students. Scientific areas, physics and chemistry. You can see here programs on physics and on chemistry, uh, theoretical and mathematical physics, physics of engineered materials and crystal politics, and programs for chemistry is inorganic chemistry, organic and pharmaceutical chemistry, analytical chemistry, and petrochemistry. Uh, fundamental informatics and information technology. Scientific areas as software engineering, computer graphics, simulation of living and technical systems, um, uh, comprehensive systems, machines learning, data missing. Uh, scientific areas as for biology as bioinformatics, biomedicine, biophysics, uh, microbiology and virology, uh, molecular biology and immunology and neuroscience. Psychology, scientific areas. Cyber psychology, information design, uh, psychology uh, and cognitive rehabilitation and journalism, scientific areas, theory of journalism, public relations, international journalism, sport journalism. Uh, how to get to academic scholarship. Uh, so it's on Open Doors Olympiad, which will from September 15, 2023 till December 10, 2023. Uh, here you can see additional benefits, a 20 percentage discount to the tuition fee. Uh, for winners and prize winners, basic monthly bursary depend for Berlin students, academic research and social activities, uh, research and grants involvement, uh, scholarship and international from UN and industrial partners, uh, thematic research scholarship or master, uh, PhD students from the Russian uh, government, and engagement support and consultor from UNN career office. Extracurricular activities of international students. Uh, it's adaptation and integration programs, volunteering, exchange programs, festival and culture, scientific uh, conferences, conversational clubs, sports competitions, we have more than 80 events annually. As for the dormitory, uh, students live in dormitories on their campus of the university. The rooms equipped with the necessary furniture and equipment accommodate three people. Block type hostels, each block has two rooms, a kitchen, a bathroom, an entrance hall. Each floor has two Washed machines, clothes drying places, food dries, ironing room. Students have study rooms and gym at their disposal. Also have IT campus in uh, 2025 to available, to be available. Then living costs, as for living costs, uh, so accommodation dormitory, you can see the price for accommodation for apartments, for health, medical insurance, medical examination, food, uh, visa extension, and sport, fitness, and swimming pool. Um, I want to talk about Five reasons to choose Lobachevsky University. It's a wide range and flexibility of education programs. It's compliance with international standards. The quality of academic programs uh, is confirmed by international accreditation bodies. 
academic mobility and double degree programs. Uh, the university has changed agreement and double degree partnership with the world's le leading universities. Uh, up to date equipment and opport uh, opportunities uh, for young researchers. The university conduct a world class research is a wide range of uh, interdisciplinary uh, research areas. And assistance of uh, Lobachevsky University Korea office in employment, internships, and part-time job. Here you can see our contacts. Please contact us anytime you want. Uh, here's our telephones, email, and of course, address. So that's all about my presentation. Thank you very much for the presentation, Alla. Yeah, it was very useful and I believe the participants learned a lot of answers uh, to their questions. Uh, so now um, I am uh, transferring um, the screen uh, to the representative of the Kazan Federal University. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. My name is Rauf Sabirov and I want to share some more information about Russian universities and um, one of the leading and oldest universities in Russia, Kazan Federal University. So uh, let me start. Uh, Kazan Federal University is located in the city Kazan. It's the capital of Republic of Tatarstan. As uh, Nizhny Novgorod, it's not, for, uh, it's not far from Moscow, about 800 kilometers. And um, Kazan is one of the most industrial, commercial, and tourist cities in Russia. It's also considered to be one of the more attractive students for youngers and uh, young people, young students from all over the world. Uh, another thing that you need to pay attention on is that Kazan is a city of um, mix of cultures, of Western and Eastern mentalities and uh, customs, etc. So it's a very comfortable place to live and study in. Uh, coming back to the university information, I would uh, tell that it's um, it was founded on 1804 by the Alexander I, and it has a very big and a very um, uh, uh, very big uh, and long history. Uh, during its uh, period of uh, being, it has um, a very uh, uh, noun milestones, uh, and uh, most of them are presented here on the uh, slide. Like uh, all the periods we can uh, uh, divide into three main groups. So it's the imperial period, it's a Soviet Union period, and it's modern period. Uh, we have a lot of uh, famous alumni and uh, people who worked in the university. So uh, some of them, several of them are presented here. These are Leo Tolstoy. He's one of the world's great novelists. I suppose that uh, the, several of you know his uh, main works like War and Peace, Anna Karenina, etc. So our rector was Nikolai Lobachevsky, and uh, that is a very famous person in uh, mathematics. He is the founder of non Euclidean ge geometry. It's a new direction, a new sphere in uh, uh, geometrics. Uh, Karl Klaus, he discovered the chemical element and named it after Senin. And uh, also Ivan Simonov, he was one of the pioneers in the South Pole. Uh, now Kazan Federal University is a huge scientific and educational center of Russia. We have more than 50,000 students and about 11,000 of them are foreign students from more than 100 countries. So uh, we take the second place in Russia among uh, the foreign students. Uh, we also have about 10,000 uh, people working here. It's uh, also quite a big number. So uh, KFU tasked itself to become one of the leading universities, not only in Russia, but also in uh, the global, uh, in the global. 
So uh, you see that according to QS World Rankings uh, to Times Higher Education, uh, we take leading positions. Uh, for example, in the QS, we take uh, uh, this year we took position number 398. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we were on 322nd position. And uh, we still continue to work on uh, this uh, and um, to take new positions. Uh, in some areas, we are among uh, three best universities in Russia. For example, petroleum engineering, we took the 40th position in the world, and it's the second position in Russia. So uh, educational training, it's third position in Russia. English language and literature, it's second position in Russia, and uh, et cetera. All information you can uh, take from the slide. Uh, so uh, here presented uh, information about the strategic projects of Kazan Federal University. So uh, we are the participants of the uh, Priority 2030 program. And uh, uh, according to this program, we have made uh, five main strategic projects. Information of them are also presented here on the slide. And uh, these projects are connected with uh, medicine, genomics, uh, IT technologies, and uh, some social studies. Um, according to our program of developing, we uh, work a lot on our research support projects and uh, uh, working uh, in the laboratories. And uh, according to the statistics that I have, uh, about uh, five, uh, overall about five, uh, 530 million dollars spent on the infrastructure according to the laboratories and about 200 new laboratories were made during uh, uh, last 10 years. We have a very future sports infrastructure here in uh, Kazan and in uh, the university particularly. So um, these are three main uh, sports centers. That is Moscow, Bustan, and Tunis. And two of them were built uh, to the World uh, University that was held here in Kazan in 2013. So the university has passed, and uh, these uh, sports uh, centers, sports uh, uh, buildings were given to the university to use in uh, studying and uh, to give uh, opportunities to the students to work on their sports. Like uh, because uh, now uh, we have uh, an, our own football team, basketball team, volleyball team, and a lot of other sport activities. So uh, the pandemic has already passed, but uh, it has uh, changed uh, our mentality. I mean, mentality of the university, and um, it has shown us that uh, we are responsible for the health of our students. And uh, now we consider the student health as our responsibility. And uh, we work on uh, saving it and uh, uh, making uh, good conditions for all our students. And uh, we successfully cope with this uh, task because we have our own clinic. It's an example of the medical organization entering the structure of uh, educational institution in uh, Russian Federation. About 2,000 people work there, and we have about 42,000 square kilometers of uh, premises. Uh, let's uh, talk about the social infrastructure. And um, we are one of the universities with a big number of uh, dormitories for foreign students. Uh, we have about 14,000 uh, places to foreign, not to uh, students, and 8,000 of them are here in uh, the university village. As I told you previously, uh, we have 50,000 students, and not all the students get the dormitory, but uh, we look at every case and uh, try to help all students that really need a place in the dormitory. So, uh, here in uh, photos, you can see the university village. It's um, uh, we are honored to have this kind of uh, dormitory because it was also built uh, to the World University uh, 2013 uh, for foreign sportsmen and uh, sportsmen. And uh, after the university, it was given also to the university. And now our students live there. 
it has all very good conditions for all students because like in every room there are only three or four people most of the rooms has uh, uh, most of the rooms have their own uh, beds uh, uh, or uh, kitchen and uh, if you be interested we'll send you the links in order to uh, show uh, this dormitory uh, we work also on secondary and primary education. For those who study uh, education programs, I mean uh, programs on education, uh, they can have practice in one of our uh, secondary schools. It's a Lobachevsky license or IT license. The, these uh, schools are also among best schools in Russia. Uh, for academic research, uh, in uh, ecology, physics, astronomy, we have our own Astro Park and bo Botanical Garden. Like uh, it's also huge uh, uh, buildings, uh, huge areas, and uh, our researchers can work directly there. Uh, we also always tell for our students that they can build uh, and create history together with us. Like uh, all students can uh, uh, make influence on uh, uh, universities uh, developing and uh, the university research and we will never forget it as we never forgot have forgotten the uh, researchers who worked here in the university and uh, about uh, 10 museums of uh, humanitarian engineering and scientific profile work at Kazan Federal University. Uh, we have our own university media. It's a TV channel, corporate 24-hour TV channel that uh, is translated into TV for all major, major Russian providers. And uh, if you work in, uh, if you study on uh, television or uh, journalism or uh, this kind of programs, uh, your parents can uh, come home and open TV here in Russia and watch your work. And it's also a very good experience for the students that are working on this uh, TV channel. So uh, now we have come to the KFU academic structure and all our programs we can divide into three main uh, blocks. These, blocks are these programs are connected with natural sciences, physics and mathematics, and social sciences and humanity humanities unit. So uh, we have also three branches that are two of them located here in Russia. These are Nabirzhny Chilny branch and Yelabuga branch. And one of them is located in Jizak. I will tell some more information about it uh, soon. So uh, you can see a QR code here. You can uh, scan it and uh, you will um, uh, see the information about English taught programs in our university. So uh, I want to share some information about branches. Uh, the biggest branch is located in Nabirzhny Chilny. It's uh, the major industrial center. The city uh, is the home for Kamas factory. So uh, the students that are studied here are aimed to work in Kamas factory. It's one of the giant uh, factory in Russia. So that's why this branch is uh, uh, specified on engineering, physics, and mathematics. Another branch is located in Yelabuga. It's also on uh, a, a branch with more than 200 year history and its uh, its specialization is uh, on uh, uh, pedagogical studies, corporate economy and finance, uh, psychology of education, etc. And uh, last year we have opened a new branch. It was the first uh, Kazan Federal University branch opened uh, abroad and um, it was opened on 10th of October and all the programs that are conducted there are presented on the slides that are medical business, dentistry, pharmacy, medical biochemistry, geology, software engineering, information system, etc. So uh, now we have come to the academic programs. We are a classical university uh, and we teach fundamental uh, science as well. So uh, he, here you see the main programs that are conducted here in the university. These are mathematics, mechanics, nanotechnology, physics, astronomy, software engineering, 
um, quality management, uh, radio physics, etc. Uh, we have a, a big uh, social science and humanities unit. It's presented by uh, six institutes that are part of uh, Kazan Federal University. We have programs on economics, management, tourism, marketing, psychology, international relations, linguistics, law, and uh, other programs. Uh, we pay a big attention on natural sciences unit. And uh, when we discussed uh, strategic projects, uh, you can see that uh, four of them are connected with natural sciences. And uh, here are the programs on geology, petroleum engineering, ecology and natural resources management, chemistry, fundamental and applied chemistry. Uh, Here is presented additional fees that you may need to pay or that you will need to that, that you will receive. So if you will get a quota, if you will be a winner of the Olympiad, you will have a scholarship about two hundred five. 2,500 rubles per month and accommodation fee is about 1,500 rubles per month with extension is about 1,600 rubles so uh, when you come to Russia uh, you will need to annually make medical insurance and the price of it is about 5,000 rubles and um, Every year, you will also need to make medical examination. It's uh, about uh, 5,800 rubles per year. And uh, for some of you, you will need to uh, make a recognition of your educational certificates. It can be done here in Kazan or it can be done in Moscow. I suppose additional information you will receive uh, when you will apply for the scholarship program. And uh, we also provide for our foreign students a foundation year. We have one of the biggest uh, preparatory schools in Russia, uh, where about uh, 1,300 people study. And uh, it will help you to master your Russian language to study at the university if you want to study in Russian language. Or it can help you to uh, just... Uh, familiarize yourself with the Russian culture, with the Russian traditions. And uh, for your understanding, if you will study in uh, English language, it's better to get some basic knowledge on uh, Russian language as well, because um, outside uh, the university, not all people speak English, and it will be a bit hard for you to communicate to these people. But uh, if you will uh, learn some basic words, some basic phrases, uh, that will it will definitely help you during your studies here in Russia. So uh, if you will choose to take a year to study Russian language, you will need to, to successfully accomplish this program in order to continue studying on quota. And you will need to get a certificate that confirms your level of Russian language. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Here you can see our contacts. Uh, if you will have any questions, feel free to write us or phone us. We use uh, messengers. You can write us on WhatsApp or Telegram. The number is also written here in the slide. So uh, if you will have questions, uh, we would uh, gladly ask uh, answer to all these questions right now. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for uh, the presentation. I hope that it answered some questions uh, which we get in the Q&A section, but um, uh, I am inviting also Alla to rejoin us. Yes, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So I will review the questions we got in the Q&A section. Uh, and um, let me start. So we have the question from Ahmed uh, to Kazan University, uh, like probably you answered it, but uh, just uh, let uh, let address it again. So do you offer masters in physics? Mm -hmm. Yes, we offer masters in physics, but it's taught in Russian language. 
You don't have mm -hmm. English taught programs in physics. Okay. Okay. So, uh, is it possible for the participants to take a preparatory uh, year in Russian and then switch to the uh, program in in uh, Russian language? Then. Yes. Sure. All our you, you can start any our program if you learn Russian language, and uh, our like foundation year can help you to uh, make your Russian language better to improve it, and uh, then the level that you will receive here in the preparatory school will uh, help you and uh, to study the main program. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So we have another question, um, I believe from Ahmed again, or a different participant. So uh, this question is about the general structure of courses in Russian universities. So could you please give more information about how it works and how it organized? Uh, is there like teacher assistance available for these students? Uh, how does it usually work with the uh, international students at your university? Mm -hmm. So, uh, if we speak about our university, I would like to start with the educational process. Like uh, the educational process for um, master programs, we can divide into two main parts. So, first part is educational part. When you contact with the teachers, with professors, you have seminars, lectures. Uh, so, second part is connected with your practice. Uh, we pay. Uh, big attention on uh, practices of the students and uh, you will have uh, industrial practice so you will come to the industry and work with uh, people uh, from the like uh, industry and we also pay attention on uh, teaching uh, practice like you will have uh, teaching experience you will need to prepare a kind of seminars a kind of lectures and uh, get prepared to start teaching as well uh, and another part is also uh, it's uh, writing the choosing the topic to your master thesis and uh, writing this master thesis because you will have a supervisor that will work on from starting from your first semester on your like final work that you will need to uh, accomplish and uh, uh, show after you graduate. Okay, thank you very much. Ala, do you do you have something to add? No, I don't have. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank my you very colleague much. will answer all the questions in the chat. Okay, okay. So we have another question. Um one second. So this is, the, uh, you know, actually, I probably address a lot of questions we got regarding the uh, programs available at the universities. So today, uh, you were able to listen to the uh, presentations of uh, two of the university's organizers, and they explained in which programs you can enter uh, if you are a winner of the Olympiad. Uh, regarding uh, the rest of the programs available, you can uh, join the following webinars we are going to have. They will be available each uh, Thursday. And uh, also um, at the end of October, beginning of November, uh, we will uh, also publish a list of the available programs in each university in the subjects uh, pages on the Olympiad website. You can also um, familiarize yourself with the programs available in uh, the um, university's organizers on the Olympiad uh, website if you go to the organizers section. And uh, if you follow the websites of the universities, uh, the programs available for the winners uh, will also be pu uh, published there. So you don't have to wait and uh, you can make your choice um, by yourself. Uh, you have to investigate and uh, you're welcome to join our uh, future webinars. Okay, so I will just miss those questions now <laughs> regarding the final choice of the university. So um, I'm just trying to find the questions related uh, to the universities now. Uh, so there was the question uh, regarding uh, like the, from the students uh, who have families uh, and uh, do, uh, have you had any experience with accepting the international students uh, who were accompanied by the family members? 
Uh, do they have an opportunity to join them while they study in Russia? So if you let me, I can uh, just uh, sh share the information about my university. We have uh, the rules that uh, uh, give chance to bring the family for PhD students. Like, uh, and uh, we do not uh, offer uh, and accept students uh, with their families on master programs, unfortunately. So uh, if you apply for a PhD program, it's uh, possible to come to Russia with, with university's invitation to uh, study here with your family. But if it's a master program, uh, it's up to you. You can come here. You can uh, study. You can also take your family with you. But we can't guarantee that we'll prepare the invitation for them or give dormitory for uh, your family, etc. So it will be only up to you. Okay, thank you very much for your reply. Uh, Ala, did you have any situations uh, when the students uh, came uh, to Russia uh, accompanying by their family members? Uh, I think uh, the same with uh, the same with University of Kazan. We have the same situation with Raouf. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, I can't see the chat. Whether I can see the chat where the questions. Uh, you can go to the Q and A section. Yeah, it's not in the chat. It's in Q and A section. Oh. It's uh, next to the participants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so there are some questions regarding the organization of the Olympiad. As I said, you can uh, find those answers on the Olympiad website. And you can address your personal issues by contacting us uh, via the uh, feedback form. Okay, so I'm going through the questions. There are questions about like uh, whether the IELTS test or any other proof of English is required. Uh, the general question to this question is that uh, to participate in the Olympiad, it's not required and it's not the part of the requirements of the universities. So if you were able to take uh, the um, entrance test, the exams, it would be enough for you to study at the university. Uh, am I correct here? Yes, okay. So it is confirmed by the university representatives. So we address the question, is it need to IELTS by Kazan Federal University? <laughs> yeah, if you were not a participant of the Olympiad, yes. <laughs> but but you know, if even, you participate... even if you are not a participant and you want to apply to study mm -hmm. on a paid, uh, on a tuition paid uh, basis, uh, we don't require IELTS certificate. Like we have our mm -hmm. own English exam and you need to pass it. And according to the results, we'll uh, make a decision on accepting or not. Like uh, even for mm -hmm. tuition-based uh, education, we don't require IELTS. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are also some questions from the participants. I also, uh, I actually found a couple of them. So the general idea and the, like the general idea of the question is um, if uh, the bachelor degree uh, was received in one area, and the participant is looking for uh, another area for the master's studies. Are there any specific requirements uh, for the uh, bachelor degree to be uh, obtained in the related field? Or does it depend on the, maybe like on the exact program? What is the general rule for accepting the students for master's program? Yeah. So uh, till now, in Russia, there is no any limitation on choosing the master program. And even if uh, your bachelor's fair differs from the master subject that you want to study, like you can apply, you can pass the examination. And uh, according to the results of the examination, if you have enough knowledge, it's uh, possible to accept you to this uh, master major program. Like it's all the same with the Open Doors Olympiad or a school, any other scholarship program. Like you can apply, and if the universities accept you 
with uh, these results. It's possible to study. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, uh, the following question is, uh, and there are quite a few of them regarding the job opportunities for international students in Russia. So, uh, like, uh, as the university, do you have any departments which assist students with the job placements? Are they successful with the job placements uh, when they come for studies in Russia? Like, if you have some experience to share, please go ahead. So, okay, I will start again. And um, uh, Kazan Federal University has um, a big experience in working with uh, industry and with uh, companies for uh, uh, employing international students. Like uh, till now, we have uh, three uh, different departments that work on uh, job uh, facilities. So first one is uh, uh, they, it works with uh, part-time uh, job employment, like for those who uh, who is looking for uh, 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 who, who is looking for the job or part time, like uh, after their studies uh, uh, or for maybe a short period for summer. Uh, another department works on with uh, those who is about to finish their studies uh, in the university and who wants to stay here in Russia and continue working here. Like um, uh, they invite uh, companies uh, to present themselves and choose uh, foreign students as well to start to work there. Like uh, last year, Russian government gave a very uh, big opportunities for foreign students. And uh, now foreign students uh, that uh, study in Russian university, in the Russian university, can uh, work uh, officially. And uh, uh, even, even though, and uh, Despite this fact, uh, there are also other options. Starting from the last year or this year, uh, you can also obtain RBPO. Like it's a new status for international students. As soon mm -hmm. as you uh, obtain this kind of document, it means that you can uh, work officially here in Russia. And uh, after you graduated from the university, you have also uh, half a year to start working and to prolong this uh, document or to obtain a new one. So it means that there are a lot of um, opportunities here in Russia uh, regarding the work facilities. And uh, uh, you just need to uh, be active and uh, try to find the work uh, that is appropriate for you. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you very much. Okay, so um, like uh, there are some questions in the Q&A regarding the portfolio submission. Uh, as I mentioned during the uh, presentation, during the overview of the Olympiad, uh, you will be able to submit the portfolio uh, in November. So, so far you can upload the documents, edit the motivation letter and proceed with the entrance test. So no worries that you don't have the submit button yet. Um, like the participants ask uh, about the opportunity to share the presentation slides. Will it, if it's possible, could you please like share the presentation in the uh, chat for the participants? Mm -hmm. Okay. You sure. Okay. So I will, get, I will give uh, some time for you to do that. Uh, so, um, Regarding the um, the questions regarding the uh, passport submission at the stage of the registration, it's also not required. If uh, you still have your passport, like if your passport is not ready yet, it will not be required at the at the registration stage. But at the stage when you uh, have the exam session, you will have to provide your um, I, some ID document with your photo for the uh, proctoring system. And of course, you will need the passport when uh, you apply for the scholarship. Okay. So um, there, there are also uh, some um, participants are a bit confused about the uh, scholarship um, available for them. 
so um, I will just uh, first give the uh, like general uh, general rule, rules of the scholarships provided. So uh, if you are a winner uh, of the Olympiad, uh, you are able to apply for this scholarship for the full tuition scholarship. And it will cover your tuition costs uh, for master or PhD program. Uh, but if you are a prize winner, like it depends, probably you would be able to take a place of the winner in case the winner refused from the from the place or the plans changed or like for any other reason. Um, and the, here uh, the universities can provide you with uh, some special discount on their programs. So in that in those cases, probably you wouldn't be able to get the full scholarship and it will not be awarded by the government of the Russian Federation. Um, um, on top of the scholarship, tuition scholarship provided, uh, there is the student allowance, uh, like the stipend, uh, which you get on the monthly basis. I believe uh, um, my colleagues from the universities covered uh, those amounts in their presentations, but probably like, uh, could you give two more words about um, the expenses, the living expenses in Russia, like what the participants can expect and whether maybe you, uh, the university provides any additional scholarship for international students to cover the costs of their living in Russia. Mm -hmm. So, Alla, do, do you have any additional uh, scholarships for international students provided by the university? Uh, for living expenses, I mean, not for tuition fees. Uh, yes, all the information was at the presentation, so I have nothing to add. Okay. Yeah, I believe Ralph also covered it at the presentation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I covered it in the presentation, but okay. I, I just want to add information about the expenses for uh, a month for an ordinary student. Uh, we do understand that every student spends uh, a different amount of money every month, but uh, like Moscow and uh, uh, like, uh, okay, uh, Kazan and Nizhny Novgorod is not so expensive as Moscow and St. Petersburg. And uh, I suppose that uh, it will take about $300 for a student to cover all their living expenses uh, in a month. And uh, if you see that uh, like Moscow and St. Petersburg is uh, very expensive for you to live there, because um, generally it takes um, uh, about twice much more than uh, in living in Kazan or Nizhny Novgorod, it's better to choose our cities to study. Okay, um, there is a question, right, in a second. My question belongs to Kazan University. Do you have a construction management program? Mm -hmm. Construction okay. management. Um, we have this kind of program, master program, in our branch, Nabirni Chilni. So it's connected with uh, construction, buildings, etc. We have... Um, uh, a program on bachelor on architecture, but it's not ma management. And next year, I expect that we'll have a master program on this uh, uh, mm -hmm. sphere. But uh, till now, uh, it's uh, better presented in our branch in Ambridge Nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. Okay, so regarding the Russian language, we also oh, we already answered that question that you have uh, you provide the programs available in Russian and in English as well. It just depends on which programs uh, the participants choose. Okay, so another question like about uh, Kazan University, like uh, is business and management program offered in English or in Russian language? So uh, we have um, both in Russian and in English program. If you speak about English taught program, that is general and strategic management. And uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, actually, I am the alumni of this program. 
and uh, I can <laughs> so give more information about like details of this program. It was uh, made as a kind of elite program with uh, like best teachers in uh, Kiev, in Kazan, in Tatarstan. For example, we had teachers that uh, were like ex ministers of uh, economics, or uh, they have uh, like practice uh, working in somewhere in Europe, in the US uh, countries, uh, country, or somewhere else. And uh, uh, now they work like uh, as a professor on this program. That's why I highly recommend this uh, program to choose. And uh, like uh, I can guarantee a good quality of it. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. And so far, um, there are like a lot of uh, questions specifically. Um, okay, there is also the, another question for Kazan University. I have Bachelor of Science Educational Biology and Master's in Public Health. Can I apply to study medical business or medical biochemistry? Okay, so just... medicine, medical biochemistry, these programs are not uh, master programs. Uh, mm -hmm. They are all, all generally specialist programs. That's why, like, uh, you you can't apply for these programs as a uh, open door to winner. But uh, it's your chance and opportunity to apply uh, directly to the university if you want. Uh, if you speak about the open doors uh, winning and uh, we have a program on biology and uh, there are a lot of profiles that are presented uh, in this program we can uh, share detailed information with you about it if you write to our email and uh, we will go give contacts of the people who are responsible for uh, biology department here in the Kazan University and I suppose that they will be able to give you proper information about the program. Yeah, okay. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, so probably the last question, uh, which is addressed by one of the participants, um, is could you share some success stories of international students who studied at your university? Uh, maybe what achievements they had and uh, like uh, you can share some interesting facts about the international students who were successful in the past. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sure, we can. We have students uh, that uh, work uh, in their countries in uh, uh, ministries, in uh, uh, central banks, etc. Like, uh, actually, I was also a foreign student in Kazan Federal University. Like, uh, 10 years ago, I came to study <laughs> from Uzbekistan. And, uh, like, about five years ago, I started working in the university. And it's, I'm now the head of international admissions office. Maybe it's not a very big... Uh, and good story of success, but uh, I, it's a good example that uh, university works with their international students and gives them chances to realize themselves. Okay, thank you very much. Ala, do you have like, okay, can you share some successful stories about uh, the international students who graduated from uh, the university? Yes, of course, we have a lot of international students who just, uh, um, graduated from the university and uh, they liked our university so much that they decided to stay here with us and continue their um, work here at the university. So we, we have a lot of uh, interesting stories <laughs> about uh, international students. Okay, yes, okay thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, uh, for the participants, I just would like to know that you still have an, uh, have an opportunity to upload uh, the presentations of the universities. They are available in the chat section. Um, like, uh, unfortunately, we do not have enough uh, time to address maybe all very specific questions you asked, uh, because like for some um, uh, for some situations, like uh, we cannot we cannot address all all the um, specific situations you are in, uh, especially when you ask, uh, like I graduated from one program, I would like to be admitted to another one. You can address all those questions directly to the universities. Uh, 
Um, and uh, I believe the like the contact details should be shared in the presentations. So you are welcome to uh, to write your questions uh, to the representatives of the universities. If you have any organizational questions, you're welcome to address them uh, to the uh, organization committee of the Olympiad. So, so far we are closing up the session. Uh, the recording of it will be available uh, on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And um, we will be happy to welcome you on the following sessions devoted to uh, different Russian universities. Okay, thank you very much, Rauf and Alam. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, dear thank you participants, bye-bye. Have a good day, bye.